Hey, you fancy people. Welcome to that sci-fi show. I'm Jay. Real quick, my son made me promise to say hi to his friend Aiden. Hi, Aiden. I'm not doing this again. Let's talk about Star Trek and philosophy right after the bump. Star Trek, or as my one-year-old niece pronounces it, Twek Stars, is currently on its seventh TV series and there's just tons of it, including the original series, the animated series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and Discovery. There's also the motion picture, The Wrath of Khan, The Search for Spock, The Voyage Home, The Final Frontier, The Undiscovered Country, Generations, First Contact, Insurrection, Nemesis, Star Trek The Reboot, Star Trek Into Darkness, and Star Trek Beyond. Whew. Break it all down and you have an estimated 700 hours of content, and I've seen it all at least three times. The original Star Trek debuted in 1966 and was created by self-described humanist Gene Roddenberry, who once said that Star Trek was, quote, my social philosophy, my racial philosophy, my overview on life and the human condition. Humanism is an outlook on life or system of thought that eschews the divine or other supernatural matters, instead stressing the innate goodness and potential of human beings. And while this video isn't about humanism, understanding it can provide some much needed context as much of Star Trek seems to be based in this idea. For Roddenberry, the future was not a dystopian nightmare. In fact, he believed that it would be quite the opposite, and Star Trek reflects this belief. Star Trek emphasizes nonviolent attempts at conflict resolution, cooperation, respect for all life forms, reliance on science and the search for the truth, and so much more. But where do we start? Well, let's start with the Prime Directive or Starfleet General Order Number 1. That sounds like it might be important. Warning, do not engage in drinking games while watching this video. If you drink every time that I say Directive or Prime, then you will die. The more you know. The Prime Directive is a policy of non-interference concerning other cultures and civilizations. The object of the Prime Directive is to prevent outside interference within less advanced civilizations. In practice, this means that when dealing with or studying any less technologically advanced civilization, Starfleet personnel cannot identify themselves or their mission, interfere with the social development of the planet, or make any reference to space, other worlds, or the existence of more advanced civilizations, even if that means sacrificing the lives of Starfleet personnel or even one's own life. The Prime Directive is often thought of as applying only to planets who are unaware of the existence of spacefaring civilizations or only to pre-warp civilizations, but it's a bit more complex than that. For example, the Prime Directive also prevented Starfleet from involving itself in the purely internal affairs of other advanced civilizations. Case in point, the Federation had a policy of non-interference during the Klingon Civil War, causing Worf to briefly leave Starfleet to get involved. On the other hand, there were civilizations that the Prime Directive did not apply to. Human colonies, for example, were not covered by the Prime Directive at all. It could also be suspended in certain circumstances. For example, the directive applied only to living and growing cultures. It's not clear exactly what constitutes a growing culture or a living culture in the eyes of the Federation. However, we do know that this exception was once used on a planet called Beta-3, where the people were being mind-controlled by an ancient computer, possibly one of the most Star Trek plots ever. Other instances where the Prime Directive might have been suspended included, but were not limited to, societies that send general distress calls, those that already know of and had previously contacted the Federation, or a society that engages in necessary diplomatic discussions with the Federation. The list of exceptions goes on and on. There were 47 suborders to the Prime Directive by the latter part of the 24th century. That's not even getting into the Omega Directive, General Order 24, or the many cases of Starfleet captains bending or outright violating the Prime Directive. 
It's important to note here that even when skirting or violating the Prime Directive, members of the Federation do seem to genuinely believe in the philosophy behind the Directive and often do try to uphold at least the spirit. Jean-Luc Picard once said, quote, There can be no justice so long as laws are absolute. Even life itself is an exercise in exceptions. For example, James T. Kirk once armed one faction of a civilization with primitive flintlock firearms. His intention, right or wrong, was to set the balance of power on that planet back to the way it was before the Klingons interfered by arming the opposing faction with the same type of weapons. This is an example of violating the directive itself while also keeping the spirit of the directive in mind. The justification, or rationalization, being that he could have armed them with superior weapons, but chose only to restore the balance that existed before, therefore not choosing one side over the other, even though he clearly had a bias toward one side. I personally take issue with Captain Kirk's actions here, but at the same time, I'm not sure what the alternative would be. It's a tricky issue, as a strict reading of the Prime Directive would seem to say that Kirk shouldn't interfere with the Klingons either, regardless of what they're doing, and that can't be the right answer. And so this episode leaves the viewer with a lot of unanswered questions. Did Kirk undo the contamination the Klingons introduced to this Stone Age society? Or did he exacerbate the situation? Was there another solution? And for that matter, how does the Prime Directive hold up as a philosophy in general? Quoting Captain Picard again, he once said, The Prime Directive is not just a set of rules. It is a philosophy, and a very correct one. History has proven again and again that whenever mankind interferes with a less developed civilization, no matter how well-intentioned that interference may be, the results are invariably disastrous. That is a bold statement coming from the same man who said that life itself is an exercise in exceptions. This quote illustrates the issue with the Prime Directive. It claims that no interference has ever been or could ever be positive. Now, I won't argue the point that human history is full of examples of a larger, more technologically advanced civilization interfering with a smaller, less advanced one to disastrous effect. The Prime Directive seems to be a direct response to the European colonial period where higher tech societies oppressed and murdered people even while claiming that they were helping them. Still, the idea that interference is invariably disastrous seems a little too absolute for me. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> Wrong franchise. But still, just because interference has gone very badly in the past doesn't mean that there are no examples of interference going well to be found. This could be an example of a logical fallacy called a hasty generalization. This is where someone uses a very small sample size when coming to a conclusion. While it's true that interference in less technologically advanced cultures has often gone very poorly, there are also examples of it going very well. It's hard to imagine that building bathrooms or passing out mosquito tents could lead to disaster, and yet the Prime Directive would have us believe that any type of interference is invariably disastrous, at least according to Picard. Clearly, whatever sample size the Federation is using, if it contains not one single case of interference going well, then it's not big enough. Of course, the hasty generalization fallacy would be the fault of the show's creators. In continuity, Picard could be seen as falling victim to the appeal to authority fallacy. And note that these fallacies have fancy Latin names that I'll put on screen. I'm not attempting to pronounce them though because, hell, I, I barely English good. The appeal to authority happens when people misuse an authority, in this case the Federation and Starfleet. Picard is ignoring testable and concrete evidence from historians and scholars who would tell him all about the many 20th and 21st century examples of humanitarian interference that went well. Even though Picard himself could be considered an expert in ancient cultures, he still goes with what the authority has told him, that 
interference in these cases is invariably disastrous, rather than looking into it himself or turning to a more appropriate expert. This is akin to taking history lessons from career politicians. History and philosophy are simply not their area of expertise. Although on this point I will concede that everyone in the 24th century seems to be an expert in damn near everything. So why doesn't Picard think this through and come to a different conclusion? Well, he sometimes does. We've already noted that Starfleet captains have a habit of bending or breaking the Prime Directive. One explanation as why Picard and others keep returning to this same line of thought is blind dogmatism. While the directive is certainly a dogma in that it's a set of principles laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly true, it's still also true that the Prime Directive is not intended to be exactly the same thing to all people in all situations and can be, and often is, subverted completely through its own exceptions and the actions of those in charge of enforcing it. I would argue that this is intentional. Star Trek as a show seems to avoid easy answers and prefers to leave the conclusions up to the person watching the show. Even the famous utilitarian tagline, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, is contradicted in the very same movies where it's introduced, and while Star Trek preaches the virtues of cold logic, it also often goes out of its way to show us how stupid cold logic can be in some situations. To me, the message is clear. A good idea taken to its logical extreme can be very bad. The moral indifference that Starfleet seems to show toward tragedies like plagues, natural disasters, and other suffering is cold, indifferent, and morally questionable. But perhaps we as the audience are meant to see that. Perhaps the show wants us to know that a good idea can be taken too far. And let me be clear, I believe that the Prime Directive at its core is a good idea. Perhaps the best solution would be to give more discretion to those in the field. The problem here is that violating the directive to cure a plague, for example, could be just as likely to start a plague on the same planet. If the history of the colonization of the Americas is any indication, it's very likely. So these exceptions have to be carefully implemented, and that discretion has to come with training. Training that, ideally, would include a lesson in the dangers of blind dogmatism. My main point, however, is that Star Trek is upfront about the issues with the Prime Directive and puts them on full display for everyone to see. I won't say that Gene Roddenberry had no agenda because as stated earlier, he literally said that Star Trek was his philosophy. I'm just saying, let's be careful not to conflate the conflict intentionally created to make the show interesting with the message of the show itself. At its heart, Star Trek is a long series of morality tales about the dangers of things like racism, dogma, and yes, foreign intervention. In the real world, people don't always make the right choice. People can be blinded by dogma and logical fallacies trip up even the best and the brightest. Let's keep in mind that Star Trek doesn't want us to accept everything the Federation or Starfleet says. The guys at Wisecrack once said that Star Trek is critical of easy answers, and I think that is worth keeping in mind. I'd like to thank all our patrons on Patreon for their endless patience and incredible support. These are their names on screen. I love you fancy nerds. This won't be the last video that we'll do on Star Trek and philosophy. I'm working on another video that will guest star Lore Reloaded, so keep an eye out for that. And I also have an episode upcoming about the Avengers and lots more, so hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I mean it. Do it. Do it now. Feel the peer pressure. <laughs> Until next time, guys, I'm Jay Parks. Check it out, guys. My chair broke. When I told my bestest buddy Mark about it, he said, Please tell me you were recording when it happened. What a great friend. You're a great friend. I, I wasn't recording, but here is a dramatic reenactment.